Good evening, everyone. Welcome to At Home with Outset. My name is Tracy Amadi, and I will be your host tonight. This is a part two of a three series uh, program, and I'm sharing my, um, my journey on dialysis, um, me being in center, and me doing um, dialysis at home. Um, I want to know who's out there. How's everybody's week? It's almost, it's almost the weekend. And I hope you guys have um, an enjoyable week. Um, I did dialysis today, so I'm not like 100%. But like the producer told me, that the show must go on. So um, i tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I have been on dialysis um, the second time around since uh, April of 2020. Um, my first bout was in 2008. I have FSGS. Um, and then um, I was on dialysis for five years. I was doing next stage. Um, I did next stage, um, hmm, I don't know, about maybe three, four months. And because of my health was failing me and I was in and out of the hospital, the doctor told me that I should go back in center. And then in 2013, my son and I, we participated in the Living Organ Exchange. He was an exact match. So he gave his kidney to a woman and her husband gave to me. Uh, my kidney, kidney lasted for seven years. I knew in 2018 that um, it, my kidney function was decreasing. So um, here I am doing um, dialysis at home with Tableau, which I absolutely love. So what we're going to be talking about tonight is to be in the know about home dialysis. And there are some frequently asked questions. Um, and the first one is, how does home dialysis work? You first, uh, you talk to your dialysis, um, your nephrologist and your dialysis nurse, and they're going to determine if you are a candidate. And I'll go over that um, um, at another time. Um, you must have a care partner. You can't do this by yourself. And both of you will be trained. Um, it takes about two weeks for you to train um, properly, but if you feel that you are kind of still nervous about doing dialysis, you know, taking um, your treatment home, you could stay. The first week is concentrated on the dialysis patient, and then the second week, the caregiver comes and get trained. And the caregiver can be a friend, it could be a relative. It can also be a dialysis patient, but regardless of the three that um, you get to support you, they have to be um, reliable. Um, you will um, at some point order your supplies yourself, but with my dialysis nurse, he still is bringing my, um, my supplies to me. And even if you do order it from um, Tableau, they give you concierge uh, service where you don't have to pick up one box. They even put it away for you. Um, you do, if, if people, uh, the people who are on dialysis, you know that there are, um, there's monthly blood work. That blood work can, um, you can either go to the center to do it or the nurse could come and draw it, and then you get to the point where you could draw the blood yourself, and then the Dallas nurse would either pick it up for me for you, or you could just mail it out yourself. Everything's at a slow pace. Um, John, my dialysis nurse, he's very patient. He didn't want to overwhelm me, so the first couple of months he did come and do um, draw my blood. Now I'm a pro. Um, what else? You do have more energy when you uh, do dialysis at home because it's um, gentler on your body and you have more control of your health care. It's, you know, it's bad enough that you 
at the end up doing dialysis. And sometimes there's a large percentage of people who don't even know that they start feeling sick, they get rushed to the um, hospital, and they don't even know that, you know, they need dialysis. So, you know, the, the training um, is, uh, will help you um, get to the point where you could do things yourself. It's, you know, there's no race, and, um, and, and you could just take your time. Um, I trained for two weeks, uh, my daughter came in at the second week, and I did tell you um, about my, my experience. In 2008, my first bout, I was diagnosed with FSGS. Then I had a transplant in 2013. Then in 2018, my nephrologist was telling me that my numbers decreased. And then I had um, emergency surgery in 2020. And here I am sharing my experience with you. Um, some people ask, what are the schedules like? Um, those of you who are, who are on dialysis and are in center, you know that you have to be punctual because if you're late, then the person after you is late. There's um, a lot of stress, especially in a bad weather that, you know, no matter what, rain, shine, sleep, you got to go in center. It is flexible. You got a date. Guess what? You could go. You could do your dialysis before or after. You have the freedom to live your life to the fullest. And then also there's um, less downtime. And for those of you who are on dialysis, you know that dialysis could kick you behind. It is, I wouldn't wish dialysis on my worst nightmare. And what somebody explained to me, the incident machines are like a Maserati, all right? It wrecks havoc on your body, okay? But when you do it at home, it's like a Volkswagen and, and it's slow and easy and steady and you can control the amount of fluid that is taken off. Because sometimes if you cramp, they try to sometimes push you, especially on the weekends, You, um, they wanna make sure that you're, you are at your dry weight. So just in case you drink a little bit um, more than you should, then you don't have to worry because fluid, um, additional fluid on your body can affect your, your, your heart. So, you know, um, you have control because what I do, and this is TMI people, what I do before I start treatment, I strip, I get on a scale. That's my true dry weight because then, and then I uh, put on my clothes and then I take the difference. I take the difference. So I'm not taking more fluid than I need to, but you can't do that when you do um, end center. And, and like I said, that you can live a fulfilled life. You could schedule um, dates. You could um, spend time with your family. And I'm going to run down the things that I do. And if I was in center, I couldn't do one third of what my activities are. I am a youth director. I'm a subdirector of community service at my church. I volunteer at the food pantry uh, once or twice a week. I have a part-time job. I work. My schedule for dialysis is Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I work Tuesday, Thursday for 14 hours. And um, I'm a hostess of, of, of two live street programs, this one. And then also I do one for the youth for my church. And then I recently took up karate. I took, I was doing karate before I got sick and I, and I, I had to stop. So I really like, one, I need to exercise because you know, I'm getting kind of lazy and putting on some weight. And I like, I like the punching, I like the kicks and I get all of that anxiety out. So not saying that you have to do all of that, but whatever your life was, you can get back. Um, and like I said, that I wouldn't be able to do this in center. 
uh, when I was doing dialysis the first time, uh, the only thing that I did, went to dialysis, went home, slept, I barely ate. And then another thing too, I have my appetite back. I lost, I lost so much weight the first time around because dialysis, you just, you lose, um, you lose taste. Well, I know I did. I don't know about anyone else, but I lost taste of food. I had no desire to eat. And I went to, from a 18 to a size two. And I looked like I was deaf door knocking. So uh, me doing dialysis at home, um, and I forgot to tell you guys, this is Tammy. It's spelled with an I-E at the end, not a Y. And she's all dressed up. She wants to show you guys how she she looks on the inside and out. Um, uh, I'm sorry. I had to introduce her. Um, yeah, the, the life would not be the same. So I say to anybody, you have to be in the know, know your options. There's other um, modalities. Um, there's home hemo, there's nocturnal uh, hemo, there is PD where you have your access in the stomach, um, and then um, in center. Not every, it's not for everyone, but just, you know, find out what your options are. Okay. And then, one question someone asked, if I am interested in home hemodialysis, what do I need to do? Home hemo is not for everyone. Your, um, your dialysis nurse and your nephrologist has to make an assessment to see if, you, if it's for you. Okay? And um, these are some of the determining factors um, to determine if you are a um, home candidate, home hemo candidate. First, you have to have a positive attitude. You have to know that this is for the better. You have to be ready to go. Um, you have to have um, suitable accommodations. You have to have running water. You have to have the internet. You have um, electricity, excuse me. Um, and then you have to have the physical capability. You have to have the uh, dexterity in your fingers to, to release the, to release the, um, the knobs. All right. This is um, a filter. Okay. You have to be able to push down the spout to do this testing. Um, and you have to have, um, the me mental capacity to do so. You cannot have dementia or memory loss. Um, you have to be intolerant of the in center um, when um, you have to see if it's going to benefit you. And then there's some people who want to go to school, who want to still work. I know some people who continue to work when they were doing in center and I believe it's because of the fact that it was a necessity. They were the ones who were carrying the, um, they were carrying the, um, the insurance. So they had no other choice. The employee was willing to work with them. Okay. But um, to be honest with you, I don't know how they did it. But with, you know, doing Tableau, um, doing home hero at home, you have that flexibility. Now it's a lot easier because of COVID, you can work from home and maybe even be on treatment while you're reading your emails, when you're taking um, calls. So the, the, the opportunity for you to get your life back is tremendous. And you have to have the motivation to learn because it is a lot of information. Like I said, that generally is two weeks but if you need more time, you just talk to your dialysis nurse because they don't want you to go home and you feel uncomfortable, okay? I have a great rapport with my dialysis nurse. 
Um, you have to be stable on dialysis. You can have other underlining, underlining health issues. And then you have to have either a working fistula, graft, or a catheter. And like I mentioned before, you have to have a caregiver who is going to be committed and is concerned of your of your well-being and they are um, reliable. OK, and then another good um, and somebody gave me this. Um, if you have transportation issues, sometimes, you know, getting back and forth um, to in, in the center could be very tedious. There's some people who are not able to drive because of, I call it dialysis aftermath, um, that they just don't have the energy to do that. I have seen the first time that I was on dialysis where I was either waiting to go in or sometimes I had to, I drove myself, but sometimes I couldn't leave the center right away because my blood pressure was high. And there would be people who had to wait like a half hour, 45 minutes. And who wants to do that after you do three and a half, four hours of, of treatment? So that is to be considered. And then to the weather, when it's bad outside, you don't even have to go out, that you could just do your dialysis. You don't have to worry about your supplies because it's delivered to you. So what great opportunity for you to get your life back. And like I said, that I, I, I love my tableau. I love Tammy because of the fact that the way I was in 2008 and the way I am now, first of all, I didn't lose all that weight. Maybe I should have cut pounds, but we won't get into that. Um, and um, I'm living my life. There's nothing that I'm not able to do. And then, like I said, when I got off dialysis today about 5 o'clock, I did feel kind of wonky. But like I said, the show must go on and I'm hyped up because I'm hoping that the information that I give you, you could make a sound decision that possibly, you know what, I'm going to look into doing um, dialysis. And there's one more um, session um, section that I wanted to go over with you is what do you need? Some people just say, I live in a small, I live in a small um, apartment. There's no way that I could fit the, the machine and the supplies in the boxes. Now I'm gonna, um, if you could just be patient with me, I wanna show you what my table looks like when I do dialysis. Even now that I have Okay. This is my table when I start dialysis. These are my buttonhole needles, my syringes. Everything that I need is arm's length. Even though that I have a caregiver, I'm very um, independent. I want to be able to get whatever I need. That, you know, the only thing like my daughter would do is maybe if I ask her to get me something to drink or whatever. I, um, and then, I don't know if you can see it. Then these are, these are the tubes for the monthly. It's a lot, but I only take like four out each once a month. Okay. And then let me tilt it over. This is, um, and behind the screen, you see those are the two solutions that are needed. And then I'm going to push it over a little bit more. And these are the boxes. And I just want to go over, you give me a minute, because you do treatment. You do treatment three times a week, right? So three times a week times four weeks is 12. So you're going, in order to, Make sure that you have enough for that week. You're going to need three of these boxes, two of these boxes, and really six because there's two different types of solutions. Um, if you're worried about space, if you're worried about space, 
you can get um, a table that has storage. You could put um, get a storage bin to put underneath your um, your bed. Um, I have. I don't want to. I can't. You can't see it, but um, you have to be creative. You have to also. I purge like two, three weeks before Tammy came. Like I, I tell people, I went through a, um, a nesting stage. Like anything that I didn't wear, uh, didn't touch within a year, I threw out. I live in a one bedroom, one bedroom apartment. It's kind of spacious. So where my den, dinette table and chairs used to be, I moved it up. I re um, organized my um, my two or three chairs that I had and put it in the living room and I have enough space. And then I want to show you, you see that with the blue curtains? What I did here is that's a room divider and I folded it up and then I put um, a curtain rod and I hung curtains and that is where I store my, like my boxes. So if there's a will, there is a way for um, you to do um, hemodialysis at home. Home. You just have to just be on your P's and, um, P's and Q's. Maybe talk to other people that have um, are doing home dialysis, or even ask your dialysis nurse. Or maybe you have a friend that um, is good with organizing. What I did here on this table is one of those three drawer plastic containers that you could get at Family Dollar, you could get at Walmart. And what I did, I had a piece of glass from a cadenza. I put that on there and extended the, the, the space that I had. So even though I'm fortunate enough that I have the space and it's not cramped, but believe you me, if I didn't have the space, I would make it out. I mean, um, I would make sure that I'll, I'll take the time and, and, and do something where I could do dialysis at home. You know, um, use the, the, the corners of your apartment, use your bedroom, you know, and then um, like I told you before that you have to have um, a line. So either, um, I'm right outside my kitchen. So the water drain is from here, from um, the corner into the, um, into the kitchen. But I could have chose to put it in my bedroom if I chose to. But um, I just prefer to be out here. And especially like when my children come, I could still interact with them. And then guess what? I don't have a TV in my bedroom. So sometimes I like to watch TV. So, um, I'm here if anybody has any questions. I hope that it has been informative. Um, I will be back March, um, April. I don't know. It's the last. Uh, uh, Patricia, so you can do buttonhole with HHD, which is home hemo. That was going to be my question for tests and seeing. Yes, you know what? You do have to, along the fistula or the graft, when you're in center, they insert um, or they cannulate at a different spot. That could be painful, even though they put cream on. But with you doing home hemo, you develop a, uh, a buttonhole. And a buttonhole is you insert in the same site each and every time. And it doesn't hurt. And then two, you have control because sometimes the fistula, may, yeah, the fistula or graft may move. I don't know about the graft because I don't have graft, but sometimes mine gets kind of wonky and I have to be careful. So if you go slow, you won't um, infiltrate the fistula. And when you infiltrate, it's painful and it gets bruised, sometimes it's swelling. You control that. You control the, the insertion of the needle. And then some people, and we'll go over this next time, 
that the barriers of um, home dialysis is the um, needle anxiety. And I was scared too. I'm going to open up the needle so you can see real quick. This is a fissure. This is a buttonhole. It's not, it's not sharp. It's dull compared to the, the needle that they use in, in center. And, um, and you have to make sure that you uh, scrape off the scab. And like I said, that we'll talk about that in next show. But this is the needle. And then the blood goes in. And the site is of uh, the arterial. That's where the, the blame, blood comes out and goes into the machine. It uses the filter to clean it. And then it goes back and it goes that the blood is returned in the venous, the second one. So um, what I plan on doing is having a, um, doing a dialysis treatment the last show. So you guys, one, could see how easy Tableau is. And then just, you know, if you have any questions, because sometimes when I, the first time that I went on dialysis, I didn't know what to expect. So when they wheeled me into the um, dialysis room, I cried like a baby because I was just, you know, unknown. So that's the reason why, guys, you have to be in the know. You have to be in the know about your health and ask questions. And if your dialysis, your nephrologist has a problem asking questions, that tells you you need to find another dial, I mean, um, nephrologist. So my time is almost up. It has been a great pleasure. Again, I hope that this has been informative, somewhat entertaining, and I will see you next month. I believe it's the second month and uh, the second Wednesday of the month. But if I'm wrong, just just stay on Steve Belcher's uh, page and then you'll see when the next time that um, I will be doing at home with Outset. Again, my name is Tracy Amati. I bid you adieu and have a good night. Bye. <laughs>